stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. It might seem obvious, skyscrapers should look tall. But they never did until this St. Louis skyscraper reached toward the heavens in 1891. The thing about the Wainwright that's so extraordinary is it's the first building that revels in the height. Not just that it can go up to 10 stories, but that it can do that in a lyrical way. Louis Sullivan claimed to have designed the Wainwright building in just three minutes. But in reality, he was building on a decade of discoveries by other architects. The skyscraper was born in the 1880s, when growing American corporations were competing for prime downtown office space in New York and Chicago. That drove real estate prices through the roof. So the clients and the architects want to figure out how to make buildings that are taller. Architects answered the call with new technologies, most importantly, something called skeleton frame construction. Instead of holding up their buildings with thick masonry walls of brick and stone, architects found a new way to support tall buildings with thin metal frames. And the walls were mostly there to keep people inside warm and dry. Another invention that made the skyscraper possible was the passenger elevator. After all, who wants to work in a 10-story walk-up? 10, please. So architects had all the technology they needed to build tall, but they still hadn't figured out what tall buildings should look like. So a lot of tall buildings looked like short buildings just made bigger, or like, in some cases, even two or three short buildings piled on top of each other. Louis Sullivan felt this new American invention, known as the skyscraper, called for a new approach the skyscraper, he wrote, must be every inch a proud and soaring thing. Height was not just a fact, but it was also an aesthetic idea. And yet, when Sullivan sat down to design this skyscraper for beer brewer Ellis Wainwright and his mother Catherine, the architect was reportedly stumped. So he went for a walk to clear his head. The fresh air must have done him some good, because as Sullivan walked down this Chicago street, the design suddenly came to him. He rushed back inside and fired off his famous three-minute sketch. Sullivan threw the sketch down on the table of his young draftsman, Frank Lloyd Wright. The Wainwright Building in St. Louis. More than 60 years later, Wright recalled the moment when the Wainwright Building was born. He said, Wright, the thing is tall. What's the matter with a tall building? And there it was, tall. So how did Sullivan make the skyscraper soar, despite the fact that it's only 10 stories tall? Well, for starters, he divided the building into three parts, what's known as a tripartite design. First, there's the two-story base. Two stories visually made it look solid, but it also gave it that kind of comfortable human scale. Then, above the base, you have floor upon floor of identical offices. This second part is where Sullivan really draws your eye upward. The horizontal elements, or spandrels, are recessed, while the vertical piers project without interruption for seven stories. Almost till it reaches the top of the building. But then a building has to end somewhere. <laughs> That's the third part of the building. And so then, these vertical lines, as they reach the very top, suddenly burst into ornament. The terracotta ornament doesn't feature the columns of ancient Greece and Rome. Instead, Sullivan looks to nature. All the while, Sullivan doesn't let us forget the technology that made skyscrapers possible in the first place. While earlier skyscrapers almost seemed ashamed of their steel frames, the Wainwright Building emphasizes its skeleton. The steel frame's the essence of the building. It's what makes it stand. It's symbolic of the time, it's symbolic of the technology. The Wainwright Building set the tone for the next century of skyscraper construction. Skyscrapers would continue to celebrate their height, and they would continue to show off their steel frames. But ultimately, Sullivan felt the best form of flattery was not imitation, but individualism. 
part of what Sullivan felt was important about the United States and America was the power of the individual to express themselves for the benefit of everybody. And if you have each person taking their own talents and bringing buildings vibrantly alive, you are creating an American architecture.